Landers and Global Viewers, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for your support. All my new subscribers, welcome aboard. Very happy to have you. Continue to like, share, and subscribe. Those of you who are not yet subscribed, today we will be making Christmas cake or fruit cake, as it's called, Jamaican style. Right? This is the season for it. You know, we made the sorrel over the weekend, and today we're making the Christmas cake. These are two things that are just a must in the Jamaican household in the Christmas time. So this is another one on the list and we're going to get right into the baking of this Christmas cake for you. We do hope you will enjoy the video. Uh, so to begin with, here I have all my ingredients. Just want to show you uh, from the dry ones. This is salt. We have the salt right here. We have the flour and we're using cake and pastry flour. You can also use all-purpose flour, but try not to use counter flour, okay? Gives a better consistency for baking. We have here some breadcrumbs. This is not the portion to be used. I'm just giving you a view of what it is that we'll be using in the cake, all right? The exact measurements will be in the description, okay? This is brown sugar. You can also use white sugar if you like, or a mixture of brown and white, all right? Here we have some spices here mix spice for baking we'll be using this as well and baking powder baking powder on next we'll be using our fruits over here or fruits that have had soaking for just about three days i've soaked it in some rum and wine because I didn't have the opportunity to soak it for a year. Some persons can soak their fruits in a year. I'm showing you this because I wanted you to have a quick glance. The prune is the largest one here. The prunes are larger. Then the raisins are second in size. Then you have the currant, which is a little smaller. I think you can see from your screen. The currant is smaller than the raisins, right? And of course, you can see the red cherries right there. Okay, so here are the liquids. Rose water. Okay. Vanilla, There's some vanilla right there. Browning, of course, for the color of the cake. Rum, the all famous Ray and Nephew rum. Here we have the famous red label wine. Remember when I was making the sorrel, I told you that I didn't have any red label wine, but on this occasion, I do have red label wine, so I'll be using it, okay. All right, here we have the butter. You can see we, we wanted to use butter, not margarine, but butter. This is a chiffon butter, as we know it. Yes. Then we have some lime here, just two limes, which will be used uh, in the mixture, the sugar and uh, butter mixture. That's how we would have put in the eggs. So here we have the eggs. You can see the eggs here in this thing we'll be using just six to eight eggs all right those are all the ingredients we have so just in case you want i did a snap of this at the beginning so in case you want to just look at that picture quickly dash to the stores get your ingredients and then you come back and worry about the portions so that is a quick capture for you because that picture is worth a thousand words all right guys so we're gonna head on now and cream the sugar and the butter okay All right, so the butter is best left out at room temperature so that it can get really soft and easy to make a nice fluffy consistency once we've uh, mixed it or combined it with the sugar, okay? So we're gonna start that for you now. Oh yes, it's all mixed in now. Yes, guys, you can see that it's all mixed in now. It's time for us to go in with the sugar, okay? Creaming up that nice, look at that. It's that nice all-in-one consistency. That's what we're aiming for. Now we're going to just add the sugar. Okay guys, so this mixture is nicely creamed and ready to receive the eggs. Now usually we can add the eggs one at a time. 
because you don't want to be adding everything all at once. You want the mixture to be aired out nicely because that helps to give the cake that nice, light, fluffy texture, okay? But since we've had them lightly beaten here, we're just going to add a little at a time and blend. I should mention to you that the sugar and the butter, we combined it at high speed, okay? All right, here we go. Pouring in a little at a time. Don't yield to the temptation of putting it in all at once, okay? And here we go. Wow. Look at that. Okay, guys, we're adding the last portion of this egg now. And then we're going to just quickly blend, or you could say puree, those fruits that we had soaking for a few days. Okay guys, we're going to just put in our lime juice now. We squeeze two limes I'm going to use. You could use a uh, lemon juice or the rind based on your choice. Okay, I'm going to just squeeze this juice in it. Yes, that lime is, it looks small but it is juicy I tell you. Yes indeed. So these limes have been thoroughly washed and seeded. And there's no problem if you get some of the rind taste in it because remember you could actually break the, the, the zest into it directly but we're just using the juice. Okay, here we have the fruits that I had left soaking for a few days. All right, and you soak it in the rum and the wine. All right, let's puree now. guys we're gonna just add in this pureed fruits that I told you we had soaked for some time let's add it all in let's see what it should look like a nice thick kind of consistency at the moment okay guys something else I should tell you is that if you don't have a mixer a uh, standing mixer or so to do this you can always use this good old wooden spoon to combine the sugar and the butter and the eggs in days gone by oh, grandparents that did exactly that they use this i'm going to be just combining all of this together and then add in the flour little by little okay all right Guys, while you're folding this in, you must ensure that you get the corners of the baking tin. Back in the day, we call this a pudding pan, you know. Yes. And you want to use a mix and fold. Mix and fold action, okay? Mix and fold. Like that, so you're getting enough air into the mixture. All right, at this point, we're going to be adding our liquid spices. I showed you earlier, the rose water. I'm going to use two teaspoons of this. All right, two teaspoons. There we go. All right. That is the rose water. I'm going to add some vanilla now. Also, two teaspoons of the vanilla. And these are not carved in stone. You can actually put these spices according to your taste. Okay, you can add a little more. Especially in the case of the vanilla with the rose water, you want to be a little careful because the flavor is strong. Then the browning. Browning again is according to your taste. What you desire, how dark you want the cake to be. Well, for me, I don't mind it very dark, but if you can just pour it in. And mix it until you see where it's as dark as you want it to be. 
So you can gauge it by stop a little, mix it. And then if you still want it to get a little darker, then you can do it again. See that? I'm trying to get this real dark. All right. Mix and pull. Wow. This is getting very dark. Wow, this is smelling so good. Starting to smell like a real fruit cake up in here. I can smell the fruits, the rum, the red label. Jerry and Nevio is kicking here. We didn't use too much, of course. We just used a moderate little amount that to cover the, the fruits that we had soaked it in. Yes, that is dark. I'm just combining the breadcrumbs. All right, adding in your mixed spice. Two teaspoons of this we're going to be using. Some cinnamon. Salt. There's everything all evenly distributed in here. Now finally, here's the baking powder. Just using two teaspoons of this. It. I nearly forgot the baking powder, can you imagine? But just in time. Remember, it's in the nick of time. This is why you have to have your ingredients all laid out right in front of you. All right? That's the purpose. All right, mix that in nicely. All right, now. Time for sifting. Well, this will be a little at a time, as I told you earlier. If you get rid of any possible lumps or anything like that. All right. Just want to tap it in like that. Yes. I must confess to you guys, I'm not great in the baking department, but I'm helping myself <laughs> with this recipe. And I just wanted to share something with you as my viewers so that you could do it on your own. Hopefully you will try it out and you will like it, right? Because your visitors will be coming and sometimes rather than buying, you get a nice satisfaction from saying, oh, I made it. That's a good satisfaction that you can get from it, right? All right, you see, when we sift the flour, these are the grains that are left. This is why we want to be sifting it because you don't want to be having any lumps in your cake. Okay, now we just want to grease this pan that had been preheated in the oven. All right. Rub it around. Use this spatula to get that grease right around. The place is wax paper in the bottom right here. You just need to rest your, your baking tin down on the paper and maybe just. Uh, Use a scissors and put it right around. Okay, so here we are now ready for the mixture. Okay, guys, look at the consistency of the mixture. I want it to be quite thick like this. Okay, so this is a kind of heavy fruity cake. All right, that's it. All right now, this is a nine inch baking tin, but you can also use an eight inch. Okay. And you want to get the mixture just about maybe an inch or so from the top so this cake doesn't really rise too much all right keep it going and that looks like just about it use your spatula and smooth it out nicely like that okay and then 
Not that fancy. This one can take a little more. Just a little bit. Bring it up a little bit closer to the top. All right. That's it now. Okay, what I'm going to do now is gently tap this. You want to tap it and get out any extra air pockets that might be in it. And also to set it out in the tin. Just lightly tapping it like that. And twisting it a little. Okay. And voila! It's oven time. Okay, guys. So something I have to tell you is that if you don't have the metal baking tin, you can also use a glass one. The only difference this will make is that it will take uh, five, about five or so minutes less in baking time. Okay. Now we're going to just use this one here. Pour this out in it. Okay guys, we had to make a little switch because the other dish was a little wide and then when you put the cake in, you don't want it to be too flat. So we switched to a smaller dish, which is just about workable. I'm gonna put them in the oven now. Okay, so we have the oven preheated at 350 degrees and a baking tray on the bottom shelf with water. Hope you can see the tray on the shelf on the bottom. Yes, that's it right there. Your cake mix will go on the middle shelf, guys. Okay? And the purpose of this water in the baking tray is to allow the steam from it to come up and to help bake and keep that moisture in the cake, All right? So here we go now. These are not hot yet. So I can put it in just one minute. Alright, so we're going to leave it here for one and a half hour at 350 degrees. But in about 45 minutes, we will turn it down to 300 degrees. Instead of 350, we'll lower it to 300 degrees after. 45 minutes that's halfway through the baking time and you don't want to be opening up your oven every time Okay, I'm gonna switch on the light That's it middle shelf Okay Okay, we're gonna just close this up now Want to have that cake on the middle shelf and the baking tray with the water on the bottom shelf Okay guys, so after the 45 minutes, we've reduced the temperature to 300 degrees and we're leaving it for another 45 minutes. Okay, I'm looking forward to tasting to this really great Jamaican black Christmas fruit cake. Yes. All right. Okay guys, it's been one hour and 40 minutes. We said we'll check on the cake mixture in the glass disc about five minutes before because we know this one might be ready a little faster. So. All right, there it is. Let us just check it now with a skewer. I'm gonna use a skewer. You can also use a knife. See how it comes out if it's ready. That seems ready enough. That's fairly dry, I would say. Yes, that's good. So it is ready. All right, we're going to just give the other one five more minutes and then we'll remove it as well. All right, it's been one hour and 45 minutes in total now. And so we are just going to check on our second cake. Ooh. All right, guys, this smell 
this aroma in here is so awesome i'm gonna just do my skewer test once more oh that went in easy oh and it came out equally easy that's good it is ready well, we're gonna just let it sit and cool a little bit along with the other cake let it cool out properly and then i will serve it up for you oh yes this is our jamaican christmas fruit cake all right let us just test this one now with a skewer and see how it is mm, the aroma is so fabulous up in here what are you still doing at home? You should be here in my kitchen. Oh, wow, look at that. Awesome. It is ready. We're just gonna leave it to cool out for, you know, maybe three or so hours. And then I will come back and serve it up for you. Okay, guys, we've left this to cool for just under four hours. And now we're back here to just separate this can the sides uh -huh. and look how easy that is et voila look at that such a beauty mm -hmm. okay guys that's our jamaican fruit cake christmas fruit cake Oh wow, that is nice and soft. Feel it. Yes, yes, yes. That's it. See that little crumb falling? Wow. Good. Awesome. how moist it is oh my days this is so moist and lovely and it smells so good have a little piece of the wax paper there but that's all right wow mm -mm -mm. can't wait to taste this cake look at it wow see how moist that is Awesome. Awesome. Okay, guys, I certainly hope that you enjoyed this video and that you will be trying it out in your own neck of the woods this season, whether locally or internationally. Hope you'll be trying it out for your family, friends, and visitors alike. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, ciao.